What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. Today we're taking a look at a new build for Warlocks in Season 22 that's about to become insanely toxic in the most amazing way. You'll have infinite volatile abilities against your opponents thanks to the synergy between two extraordinary exotics. Together they're going to make one very broken build that will forever change the way that you play Warlock. Voidwalkers will get a major facelift when the Astrocyte first gets some much needed upgrades in Season 22. While they've never been looked at as a PvE exotic, things are about to change, allowing you to take that same level of mobility and elusiveness that you have in the Crucible and adding in some out of this world power-ups to make it a viable exotic in the PvE. The Astrocyte verse permit Warlocks to blink more often allowing you to perform two back-to-back -back blinks with reduced cooldown in between. Radar stays up during your blink, you'll receive a 100 point bonus to weapon handling when coming out of the blink, and your blink distance is increased by 25%. Also, your weapons get a 30 point bonus to airborne effectiveness. This all works out great when you're in Crucible, but the moment Warlocks step into the PvE, those Astrocyte Verse come off, and Verity's Brow, Nezarek's Sin, or Controverse Hold get put on instead, but no longer will this be the case. Starting in Season 22, when you blink, enemies within a close proximity are going to become volatile, and when blinking during a Nova Warp, your super energy won't be drained. Typically, I don't utilize Nova Warp as I tend to prefer the burst damage that the Nova Bomb provides, but since it can cause enemies to become volatile, it is a great super to clear out large groups of enemies, and not having that super energy drained when blinking will be a nice addition. The key addition though is the ability to make enemies volatile when performing a blink. As it stands right now, the only way Warlocks can create volatile abilities is by hitting a target with our charged melee, or final blows with grenades when using Echo of Instability. Which don't get me wrong, I love that fragment and we are using it because it is going to be so very sweet to have both grenades, melee, and blink to spread the volatile goodness. We've also got Echo of Undermining to grant our grenades weakening effects and we're also using Echo of Starvation. This way we get Devour whenever we pick up orbs. And just because we can't leave out our Void Buddy, we're rocking Child of the Old Gods, which gives us another source to weaken and hurt our enemies, and another means of giving us health back. Having the ability to trigger Volatile twice within just seconds off of blinking is going to be as beneficial for the Warlocks as the Gerfalcons has been for the Hunters. Volatile enemies take instant damage when becoming Volatile and explode on death, dealing additional Void damage to any nearby targets. Volatile abilities are capable of piercing enemy shields and stunning barrier champions, which means that just by blinking next to a barrier champion, that shield is going to break. This new weaponized blink allows you to play much more aggressively, and that's going to synergize with a lot of really top tier exotic weapons, like the Graviton Lance, the Wave Splitter, Layman Arc, Fighting Lion, Telesto, hell, even the Manticore might finally become viable. Plus, there's a ton of great legendary weapons that come with destabilizing rounds or repulsor brace that will be able to benefit off of this upgrade. But the one weapon that stands out the most is the Ruinous Effigy. This is one of the most intriguing and most unique exotic weapons. This trace rifle turns enemies into a small void orb a transmutation sphere as it is labeled, and this thing has multiple benefits. These orbs do receive any weapon benefits that the Ruinous Effigy would receive, so if you're using weapon surge mods, then the damage applied by the sphere will also get increased. If your void weapons are granted volatile rounds, then the sphere will receive those as well. Final blows with the orb can also create orbs of light when using helmet siphon mods. When a transmutation sphere drops, it will remain on the ground for 30 seconds, and once it's picked up, it will have a cooldown of of 30 seconds. This cooldown will be consumed when using any of the three abilities that this orb permits. These abilities use the same command prompts as swords and glaives. You have a light attack, which is the same as your standard relic punch. You can get two punches off every two seconds. Each punch deals out a base amount of 300 points of damage, 150 while in the crucible. You'll also have a heavy attack, which is a ground slam that deals 1500 points of base damage. As you can see in most of this footage, this hits multiple enemies, inflicting several thousand points of damage to those on the outer perimeter, and upwards of 90,000 to those at the blast. Any enemy caught within the blast will become suppressed and taken out of combat for a brief time period. 
And lastly, you have a guarding function, which provides a dome plus a full frontal shield that you and your teammates can benefit from. When you're inside this bubble, you will receive an 80% damage resistance bonus. Enemies within this field will take constant damage and will become blinded. Every enemy who takes damage from within this field will provide you with a small amount of health. Since you can hold the transmutation sphere while blinking, you can use this to blink into a group of enemies to cause them to become volatile and then use the benefits of the sphere. Those still standing will just become volatile again once you blink away. Or you can use the benefits of the frontal shield and damage resistance to push right into a group of enemies and then blink through them, leaving them completely decimated. This takes the mundane grenade exploits that Void Warlocks are accustomed to and completely flips the paradigm and it gives warlocks a ruthless and uncanny ability that you would typically see out of a hunter. Speaking of which, don't forget about that little void fragment called Echo of Obscurity that makes you invisible after finishing an enemy. That's something you could most certainly exploit when you have the ability to blink around the battlefield. But just how we have this Voidwalker build set up already, you're going to be able to completely demolish anything and everything that gets in your way, and everything's going to be volatile. Now before we go any further, I do want to pre-warn those who have not gotten the Ruinous Effigy, or to those who have just not leveled up its catalyst. This is one of the most demanding catalysts, as it will take you more than 1200 final blows before unlocking its masterworked ability. But once you have, you'll gain a bonus of 30% damage to the Ruinous Effigy itself when targeting any enemy that has been affected by the sphere. Transmutation spheres are only created when defeating enemies with the Trace Rifle mode of Ruinous Effigy. It is possible to create multiple transmutation spheres at once, allowing you to instantly use the powers of one and immediately pick up another. Since Season 22 will introduce Elemental Orbs as an artifact mod, giving us another weapon to use, we will be able to create Elemental Orbs off of Transmutation Sphere Final Blows, which is going to be absolutely bonkers when we compare those right along with the Volatile abilities from Astrocyte Verse. There's actually a ton of new artifact mods that are directly improving your damage output, your resilience, and ability recharge rate just by utilizing the benefits of these new elemental orbs. It really is going to be Season of the Space Balls. We'll have the benefits of refreshing pickups, which is going to give our least charged ability a boost whenever we pick up one of those elemental orbs. If it's anything like these transmutation spheres, then there's going to be a ton of them around, and they too will be able to cause enemies to become volatile. And just like the transmutation spheres, the elemental orbs that you create will be able to be picked up by your teammates. Elemental Munitions provides us with a great way to maintain double special loadouts, since defeating opponents with elemental orbs will create special or heavy ammo. And with Frenzied Stacks, we'll be able to add up to an additional 10% damage to those elemental orbs whenever we have stacks of armor charges. Communal Pickups grants weapon damage bonuses when elemental orbs are destroyed by allies. We'll also get the benefits of Elemental Embrace, which grants recovery and damage resistance when we're hit with attacks that match our subclass. Even without benefits of the seasonal artifact, this build currently is and is going to be even more of an absolute nightmare to your opponents. I know that the first hesitation towards blinking while in PvE is the inability to maneuver in certain areas, but keep in mind that you will have increased range and height towards those blinks, and you can always switch over to a non-blink jump when it comes time to cross those jumping puzzles. But in most of your standard PvE activities, you shouldn't have much difficulty maneuvering around. To those wondering if there is any way to increase how often you can blink, the answer is no. Increasing your mobility will only increase the height or distance in which you can blink. If you're having issues with the maneuverability, you could also use a sword to help improve that. When it comes to the armor mods that we have chosen for this build, our main focus is keeping ammo for the Ruinous Effigy, so scavenger and finder mods will be needed. I also like using Reloader and Auto Reloader mods, Siphon mods, Reaper mods, and Firepower mods will keep orbs generated, which will keep Devour propped, and keep armor charges full. By using 3 weapon surge mods, we'll gain a bonus in damage of 22% towards the Ruinous Effigy and any other void weapon. We've got Charged Up and Time Dilation, helping us maintain our armor charges longer. By using a special finisher mod on our class item, we can use armor charges to grant special ammo when performing finishers. This way we can ensure that we always have ammo for the Ruinous Effigy. If I haven't made it clear through this video, these changes to the Astrocyte Verse are legend. 
wait for it, dairy because this is going to be so harmonious with the Ruinous Effigy, and it's going to make a lot of great synergy with a lot of great weapons overall. But if you want to embrace the full potential of a Volatile Warlock, then it's time that you change the way that you're accustomed to playing Voidwalker and start using the Astrocyte Verse with the Ruinous Effigy and drop Volatile Bombs across the battlefield. To copy this build mod for mod, fragment for fragment, you can utilize the Destiny Item Manager link, which is in the description below. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this epic Voidwalker build, your thoughts on the Astrocyte Verse changes, the new Seasonal Artifact Month, and your thoughts of the Ruinous Effigy, and anything else that you want to talk about. Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you as always for checking out today's video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.